Okay, so let us uh, get back to our discussion on this China sword ban, which we were doing in this uh, previous video as well. So, we will continue the discussion in this particular video and look at some of more data in terms of uh, the impact uh, of uh, this ban in China uh, and some data comparing what was happening before and after in terms of uh, uh, this ban. In, uh, focused on plastic waste, uh, we are not uh, talking about other waste stream. If you are interested in other waste stream, the same UN report which uh, we have in every slides, uh, these actually came from a, a report done based on some uh, on, on UN uh, website, it is uh, available and we will put that on uh, as a reading material. Uh, but uh, for a, in every slides you can see there is a link at the bottom and if you go to that link you can find the information for other waste streams as well because it is not, uh, the ban is not confined only to plastic, it is also, uh, it does impact other waste stream too. So, <clears throat> similar table which we were looking at earlier. So, there have been some calculations also being done in terms of uh, how much waste was really imported by China. So, this, uh, they took the data, uh, population data from uh, World Bank, uh, waste generation data came from this particular paper by Jim Back et al. Uh, from 2015. And then there was uh, some UN data on uh, polystyrene, polypropylene, PVC and other plastics. So, based on that, there has been an estimate has been made. This is an estimate uh, in terms of uh, what is the plastic waste uh, generated in the waste stream. And uh, so, if you look at the total numbers here, uh, that comes out to be 11.8 percent, which is like 12 percent. So, this is the percentage of plastic that is imported uh, that is being managed in, uh, in China. One thing you would, you should notice here, the percentage of plastic in waste stream has been kept constant at 11 percent, uh, which is not really will be true because uh, it, it, as we have seen in Indian contest as well, we are getting more and more uh, plastic getting into our waste stream. So, we are uh, presently, we, in India we are at around 10 to 12 percent. So, earlier in 2010 probably we are 6 to 6, 7 or 8 percent. So, we have almost doubled our plastic waste uh, uh, volume, plastic waste uh, 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 the quantity of plastic waste in the waste stream uh, within the country uh, over last, uh, I would say, uh, maybe from uh, the last 15 years or uh, even less than that time period. So, and then waste generation rate is also kept uh, constant here at 1.1 1 .1, uh, kg per person per day, which is also not really uh, real. Uh, usually does not happen. But keeping all these, see you, when you do some calculation, you make some assumptions. So, keeping all those factors and assumptions in place, they have calculated how much plastic waste is generated, how much is imported and the total waste that is managed, which is uh, this plus this will, will, it will be equal to that. And then based on this, how much is uh, the imported? So, this you take this number divided by the total and then multiply it by 100. So, that is how you get this, these values, the percentage of plastic waste that is imported and that is around 12 percent. So, 12 percent of the plastic waste managed in China before this uh, Chinese uh, short ban uh, was essentially the imported one. So, 100 kg if they were managing, 12 kg was coming from outside China. Now, that number has gone down because of uh, this particular uh, ban. So, the countries which were uh, sending uh, plastic waste, uh, top countries that exported plastic waste to China in 2016, they started from Hong Kong, Japan, United States, US, Thailand, Germany, Belgium, Philippines, Australia, Indonesia and Canada. So, this total top 10 total was close to 76, 77 percent. So, this much uh, amount of plastic waste coming in. The thing that is coming from Hong Kong uh, is actually part of it was also coming from other countries. So, it is not only generated in Hong Kong, it is generated somewhere else, but it is channeled through Hong Kong. So, that is why you see a pretty big number over there, although the Hong Kong population is not as high as, as other countries uh, uh, that uh, we have on this list over here. So, but uh, around 76, 77 percent of the plastic waste uh, that was coming to China 
imported uh, that was getting imported into the China or exported uh, uh, to China uh, was coming from these top 10 countries which is uh, listed over here. <coughs> now, in um, uh, if you look at the trade of plastic waste in mass per trade volume where uh, initially you have uh, uh, you are looking at the export quantity, you are looking at the import quantity, then export trade value and the import trade value. So, those uh, export and imports are your dark lines uh, like a firm lines uh, which uh, with export being the dark line and the import being the uh, gray line and then uh, trade values are again uh, same, same colors uh, as uh, uh, for export and import, but here the lines are dotted lines that we see over there. So, as you can see uh, you, there is a uh, in terms of quantity uh, there is a increase in quantity in terms of import exports of plastic waste you see an import uh, the numbers are going up. Similarly, numbers are also uh, kind of uh, going uh, up for the import part too. And uh, for the trade values for the export trade values you see kind of a increase then there is there is a uh, dip a little bit and similarly the import trade value also there is a dip. So, what does that mean is uh, Although uh, the, the based on the market conditions you, you will you do see fluctuations of up and down in terms of uh, uh, mass as well as the and uh, corresponding the trade value uh, for uh, this plastic waste. And uh, there are certain external factors in terms of policy in place plastics are uh, now the packaging most of the many of these plastics are coming from packaging the packaging is getting lighter. So, you have those kind of impacts with this China sort ban now you will have a sharp decrease in uh, the number. So, that is why you see towards the end most of these uh, lines are kind of having a decrease because of uh, uh, because of the impact coming from this uh, ban. Now, uh, if you look at the source of plastic waste coming to China in 20, we, we, if you remember one thing, uh, if you have noticed one thing, we are all looking at 2016 numbers, which is just before this China ban actually came into effect. So, we can uh, compare how the things were. So, as you can see, uh, sources of Chinese cumulative exports and imports. So, this is the cumulative exports represented by country exports of PE, PS, and PVC with polyester, polystyrene, poly, 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 polyvinyl PVC, PV, like polyvinyl chloride, and polyethylene and other plastic. And then quantities for sources of Chinese imports also imports uh, for these. So, these are as you can uh, uh, look at here. Uh, so, we have uh, uh, sources of Chinese imports as well as uh, cumulative exports. So, Accumulate those are uh, uh, the different uh, if you look at the map they have been given uh, different shades for different countries and then shades are based on uh, the cumulative exports numbers as uh, over here this cumulative export numbers the different shades as you can see uh, which uh, 10 million or greater is given darker shade which you see the United States including Alaska. Then you have slightly lighter said is 5 millions to 10 millions. Then we have 2 millions to 5 millions, which seems to be the set for Australia. Then, uh, and similarly, I think the 0.5 to 2 million is the set given to Canada. And uh, as you can see, there are some countries which does not have data, so there is no set over there. So, these are the cumulative export values and the sources of Chinese imports, those are you see those different uh, arrows or different uh, wire, these, these wires like import coming from US to China and uh, for different places uh, from US to China. So, this is the sources of Chinese imports coming in from pretty much you see the most of the developed countries is covered over here in terms of uh, waste coming from developed countries to China and thicker the line more and more waste, lighter the line, thinner the line, less waste. So, that is how it has been uh, presented over here. This is the sources of plastic waste imports into China in 2016 and the cumulative plastic weight exposed tonnage. So, that is from again the value is from 1988 to 2016. So, that comes from the Brooks uh, El et al paper. <clears throat> now, the destination countries for US exports of plastic waste. Uh, so, if you look at US being one of the biggest exporter of uh, uh, recyclable plastic waste material. So, if you can look at uh, where they are ending up. So, you see the China uh, is a big uh, uh, where they, they could do go to China. We also get a good uh, amount coming to India, uh, which uh, you see uh, part of it is going to India as well. So, China, India and uh, there are several countries you see over here and uh, which Pakistan uh, also I am not sure yet that Bangladesh, uh, Burma 
and uh, many of these uh, like Indonesia, Malaysia and all those countries are there as well. Some South uh, American countries, Latin American countries, that is where also it ends up. So, as you can see uh, plastic waste uh, from uh, uh, again uh, from uh, uh, from US going into different countries uh, for processing resource recovery and all. And in this map as well, uh, darker the shade and uh, these cumulative export numbers are provided. So, that is uh, which means darker the shade uh, we have uh, more and more values over there which uh, kind of shows up uh, with, with the map as well. So, that is uh, and then if you look at from Japan uh, destination countries of Japanese exports of plastic waste and then cumulative from again 1988 to 2016. So, from Japan also we get uh, things coming to India, uh, things going to uh, other uh, African countries, things going to China, things going to some other countries and also there are some exports to uh, US as well which may be for a, some specialized kind of uh, plastic waste to be managed. So, so, this is uh, we, we hear about US, Canada or other countries more, but we do not hear about uh, uh, like Ch Japan, Korea and uh, those countries. So, but Japan also has a lot of imports of uh, waste going into uh, other countries from their own uh, land. Now, if you look at Germany, uh, similar stuff uh, as you saw for, uh, for uh, uh, US uh, uh, to China and other countries. Similarly, we see from German exports of plastic waste, uh, same color coat, color combination, same color shades and then you see the waste being sent to variety of places across the world. Uh, Mexican uh, from Mexico, uh, uh, like if you look at this for Mexican exports of plastic waste and cumulative plastic waste export tonnage. So, from Mexico part of it does go to US uh, uh, and uh, for some kind of a processing there over uh, from and some goes to Canada as well and part of it uh, comes to India and you see in Africa and uh, so there are waste traveling. So, European uh, Union also may be for some specialized uh, uh, recycling. So, waste do travel, there is a lot of tra waste uh, travel as you can see the traveling of Mexican plastic waste in different parts. Again similar example for UK, we will not spend too much time, but you can have a look at it. UK is, as you can see from UK again uh, waste going to several places around the world and where the waste is being managed. So, being said that we will just have a look on uh, what uh, different scientists are thinking about having uh, the impact of this uh, plastic uh, uh, waste, uh, plastic imports and uh, we will discuss that. So, let us look at a very short video on this one and then we will talk about it. So, here as you can see uh, this was done by uh, University of Georgia and it talks about it presents to you the global import and exports of plastic waste and uh, this is the numbers uh, as the, the years are changing on the left kind of giving the future projections and uh, if we can uh, stop it for a minute. So, and then if you can look at it. So, here we are what we are looking at is global import and export of plastic waste. So, it is the uh, so if you think about what will happen in future in 2030. So, we have uh, 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 different colors if uh, I would uh, request you to look at this a bit carefully over here. Oops. So, if these are the we have the import and export uh, then uh, imported and exported then there are certain uh, displaced. So, here the global annual import and exports have grown uh, the, by around 770 percent through 2016. So, it is estimated that there would be 111 million metric ton of plastic waste will be displaced by 2030 due to the new Chinese import ban implemented in 2018. Because of the Chinese import ban, we will have 111 million metric ton of plastic waste rather than going to China, it will go to some other place uh, for, manage, uh, for management. So, that is uh, uh, in terms of uh, like the projection. So, where uh, the waste uh, on the left hand side we are looking at uh, uh, in terms of uh, like a imported uh, uh, plastic uh, and exported plastic and uh, th those are imported is light 
blue or uh, uh, light blue color or uh, like you can say even like a light gray, light blue. Uh, this, this is the imported part that we are looking at. Then exported is the green part. Displaced, in the displaced category we have uh, imported as well as exported. Now, the imported has been given that light uh, reddish color and the uh, exported is the dark uh, red color. So, what this particular uh, picture uh, which is, pre is presenting to you is the global import and export of plastic waste. It is the metric ton of plastic waste imported and exported per country. So, how much is this being imported as well as being exported? Now, if you look at Canada, uh, it is importing uh, certain plastic and it is also exporting certain plastic container. Uh, and in terms of the displaced plastic, because the way plastic that was actually going to uh, China earlier, you, there is a sizable number of plastic which is your dark color, uh, well dark red color which is getting displaced. It is rather than going to China, it has to be managed in some other way. Similarly, you can look at the other countries too. So, you can look at the other countries in terms of the Mexico, US, UK, Belgium, Netherlands, France, Germany, some examples here. Now, in terms of the displaced plastic, uh, because since it is not going to, uh, uh, we have, it is it's, it is getting in, in China, China's uh, term, we were uh, getting a lot of uh, plastic coming in. So, we will have still some plastic, the cleaner ones coming into China and there will be certain imports. So, you see a huge amount of uh, plastic waste coming in and there will be some plastic waste which is getting impo exported from China too. So, so that is uh, <coughs> uh, the values over there. You see all that values coming. This is actually for the China uh, part. Then we have Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines, South Korea, Australia and Japan. This particular paper which was done last year does not include uh, 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 our India is not included over there. So, that is basically is trying to tell us that based on the China's uh, ban on plastic, there will be an impact on uh, uh, how the plastic will move around the world and uh, different countries will get impacted. So, if we can continue this video a little bit uh, uh, more, let us see, uh, we can go back to that, oh no, nope, sorry. Uh, we will go back to that particular video, just a second, we can go back to that, uh, yes, so if we can go back to that uh, particular video. So, here what you are seeing is the imported and exported. So, that is what you the values you are seeing, how much the import is coming, how the exports are going and that will go right up to 2017 and now, here you start seeing the displaced because where you have this plastic which is was going to China earlier. So, these are all imported plastic coming to China uh, from, uh, uh, but now we will have as with the China short policy, you see those numbers started showing up where this uh, is actually going into the other countries too. Earlier it was all coming to uh, China, it has to be managed within the country or has to go to some other countries. So, that is pretty much try to uh, talks about and then we will try to talk uh, this uh, in this particular slide as well. So, what is the implication? So, what we are lo now looking at what is the implications of this China short policy? So, now it would be increased investment in countries where the waste material originates as you saw in that particular uh, 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 small uh, video clipping that even the waste that is being produced they started uh, looking at that is why you started seeing those red bars. That means that waste is being managed there itself. So, those uh, waste rather than going to China is being managed itself. So, the US and Europe are improving their capacity to recycle resins and uh, with the new supply of volumes of polythene impacting the global balance, more volumes from domestic recycler could impact the price. New recycling facilities in other Asian countries. This also gives an imp opportunity for some other Asian countries to develop good recycling uh, uh, plants in their own country. Country like Malaysia, India, Indonesia, Vietnam who are second in line recyclers are likely to benefit from China's waste ban. If it is done properly, these countries are expected to consume a greater percentage of recycled polythene in domestic market and so that will impact uh, the virgin polythene consumption. But again, this has to be done in a proper manner, not in the informal sector with all those environmental damages. If it is done properly, it can have, uh, we can get uh, some of this US and other uh, companies 
finance some of those plants which runs properly in Indian context and we can recycle uh, those plastic materials so that we do not have to go for virgin material. So, and then there is also increased demand for feasible alternatives. So, this is uh, uh, the short term impact of this immediate block on material will likely cause a dramatic increase in the demand for existing alternative treatment solutions such as incineration and landfill because of uh, uh, decrease in available global capacity for recycling. So, those things are going to happen. Virgin resin demand to rise in China because China is uh, getting less and less uh, plastic uh, coming in. So, there will be rise in virgin demand. Uh, this ban will help reduce the waste accumulated locally in Chinese consumption and uh, the volumes are smaller, but the net effect is that China is expected to consume a greater percentage of virgin plastic. Uh, so, they will have more and more of virgin plastics coming in and the waste import ban will lead to higher operating fees for Chinese assets, uh, which will lead to higher prices in the region as well. So, so that uh, will be there. So, now there has been a lot of uh, impact in terms of in different countries as you can see that there is a China's waste ban is a wake up call for Japan because Japan was sending a lot of plastics to China. So, they are talking about that uh, China's uh, ban is kind of a wake up call uh, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for Japan. So, it is the ban caused turmoil in Japan as the government is scrambled to find alternative to recover national plastic waste. So, Japan's reduce, reuse, recycle policy is forcibly like a in successful in promoting recycling, now they used to collect it, but they send it to China. So, what they should do, there are some suggestions that first Japan should introduce regulation and use of plastic produced by prohibiting the sale or charging a fee of single use plastic. Japan should establish a specific target for business industries to redesign, remanufacture, substitute and phase out plastic product. Japan should create a campaign to educate its customer and its business how to adopt eco-friendly waste practices. And this is not only true for it, same thing is going to happen in other countries too. And it is already happening in other countries uh, where we need to start looking at uh, that uh, we cannot see this Chinese ban is really a good thing that happened to the world. Uh, I think uh, in terms of uh, plastic waste management and in general waste management as well because we are now thinking more in terms of more innovative way of uh, managing the waste rather than just sending it to China and forget about it and let the Chinese uh, industry deal with it. So, that's really has uh, created a lot of uh, new ideas, new avenues. Thailand uh, is to permanently blame plastic imports by 2021 because uh, things were started coming to uh, uh, Thailand. So, they want to now ban plastic imports. Uh, so, they do not want plastic in there as well. So, it is a uh, just after Vietnam is stopped issuing license for its scrap imports, Malaysia revoked license of 114th of countries scrap processor. All of those countries and other in Southeast Asia fear becoming the world's dumping ground for waste and recyclable materials following China's scrap ban and tightened contaminated contamination standards. So, there are all these countries are really worried that uh, we will become a dumping ground including in India. So, we have there are uh, pol policies are being in place now to so that it does not happen. Malaysia to end plastic imports within 3 years. So, you saw for China similarly for Malaysia. So, they are uh, looking at um, uh, imports ban. Uh, they also put an import tax on scrap plastics. Uh, tax approximately after October 23rd of 2018, uh, it approximately tax of 2, 3.785 dollars per metric ton will be on plastic imports, uh, uh, where they are importing the materials for free. Now, they have to pay. Government is also tightening the requirement for Malaysia process to obtain, obtain uh, operating profit. So, those things are there search for illegal processes. Uh, so, news. So, those things uh, again uh, because of uh, not become a kind of dumping ground because China is not taking this dirty material anymore. So, many countries are want to make sure that they do not become a dumping ground over there. Uh, Vietnam to limit waste exports or ship and build up at ports. So, that is another uh, uh, area where uh, Vietnam is also uh, worried about. So, many countries are acting on that. UK recycling industry brace for impact as Chinese crackdown begins. So, UK you go to Australia, uh, we are, was in Australia last summer for 4 months and most of uh, again working on waste management related stuff and most of the time the focus was more on how to deal with this waste now including plastic waste since China is now going to take it. And the thing is that if I have to, if the logic by Australian companies that if I have to really clean it up, up to a contamination level of less than 0.5 percent, why do not I just use it within my own country? Why should I send it to China then? 
So since I put it so much of uh, energy and, if, and uh, resources to clean it, I should try to use it within my own countries. So, that's, so that is helping develop new markets for many of these recyclables, including for plastic. So again, the UK is uh, trying to brace for uh, impact as Chinese crackdown. So UK recyclers are main in the, you will see lots and lots of uh, 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 these uh, uh, news articles and studies coming up. We have put together a few just to give you an example, but there will be, you will find several of them. In, uh, and every day, every week, we see something or the other of these kind of, this is a very, very fluid situation right now in terms of the plastic management. So essentially, all these, what that does mean, since China is not going to take those dirty plastic anymore, so the countries are forced to clean their plastic. And many, when they are cleaning those plastic, they are trying to develop their own market now as well. So they're trying to develop their own market so that they don't have to rely on future market, which in the long run is a good thing which has happened. So, so alternatively, as you can see that uh, there are, uh, uh, they're also uh, uh, in, uh, in UK, they're looking at destinations in Indonesia, India, Vietnam, and uh, Canada, Cambodia, Malaysia. But uh, they, 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 uh, there is no surety how long they will also accept this uh, garbage. So those, uh, those things are there. Now, in uh, US scrap exports to uh, China, as you can see over here, this is a very interesting because of uh, this uh, ban now. As you can see, initially uh, January to April 2017, uh, the figure of metric tons uh, from 4.41, uh, uh, like if you put it in a million, so 4.1 million metric tons. And then it gone down to 2.5 or 2.6 million metric ton with a percentage change of minus 37.48%. Plastic 92.2%, even copper alloys. So all these, you see that negative here, other than the ferrous, other than the ferrous number, which is on the positive here, this is a kind of a odd man out. All these figures are negative, means export has gone down from uh, January, April 2017, same period 2018. What was the difference? The Chinese ban came into effect in between here in January 2018 when they started imp uh, in, uh, uh, like uh, forcing the ban. So you see there is a, so now what will happen to this difference of the garbage? It has to be managed within US or it needs to find some other market. So. China was taking about 40% of the US paper, plastic, other recyclables, but then dropped by plastic dropped by 92% in the first five months of the year. Chinese market was greater than 15 markets combined. Now US is look, looking as a backup. So it's uh, no other market can possibly take that much volume. So it's a little time for transition. Industries still have to react. So China's, uh, it's enormous opportunity. Uh, that's what uh, I was told, the China's move to ban recyclable, enormous opportunity USA to see value in its own scrap. Uh, they said change will not be easy, nor, nor will be quick, but uh, they have, many municipalities have invested heavily in single stream recycling, which everything to put in one recycling box. And that, it's, that is creating a lot of contamination. So single stream recycling, again, we can debate. That we had, I think, that kind of a discussion in the waste management class, integrated waste management class, whether is it a single stream recycling is good or multi-stream recycling is good. Single stream recycling is good as from an operational point of view, but then the quality of the recyclable goes down because you will have more contamination showing up there. So, but that's what most of the cities have been practicing in North America. So uh, let's look at this particular video and then we'll uh, stop in terms of where, uh, uh, like uh, what the US is uh, struggling with, what to do with tons of recycled materials. So we'll uh, watch this uh, video and then we'll stop this particular module. Can even send these materials. That just means so that buyers are being more selective on what they buy and recycling As centers can, are left uh, with stockpiled bales of recyclables. There. It's not well for recyclers. Uh, it's, it's it's been no kind market. of a horror story actually because oh, um, something wrong you know, we have limited audio. budgets so and really. limited labor to so we'll put try to play this video in the next one. Like, uh, so because brokers and buyers. Okay, so we'll we'll discuss it in the we'll discuss with this uh, starting of the next uh, uh, module. 
uh, next video of this. That will be the last video for this particular week, which will kind of summarize the impact of China ban. As you know, this particular week, the focus has been on uh, uh, the plastic bans in different countries. Uh, we talked about uh, India, we talked about some other countries, some African countries and then the focus has been of this Chinese ban because as you may, must have realized by this time that that's a big deal in terms of plastic waste management uh, throughout the world including its impact on India. So, we will continue our discussion in the next video, we will uh, we'll talk about that and then wrap it up, uh, wrap up this particular uh, module. So, thank you. Uh, uh, for uh, I hope uh, you are taking your quiz on time and uh, uh, if any questions put it on the discussion forum we will be happy to answer. Thanks and see you again.